Oh, my photo didn't come out properly. I love this photo because it's actually the principal of Donald Primary School showing what's happening in school communities, which is introducing, in this case, he'd been out digging in the school grounds to introduce a cooking garden, and that's part of the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Program. And that's one of the uh, programs that I'll be drawing on today. This is a different version from the one I had. Not to worry. Um, we are evaluating the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Program, which is a fantastic program that's being introdu introduced to schools across Victoria and Australia, and is giving children the experience of growing, preparing, cooking, and sharing good food. I'll also be drawing on the Fun and Healthy in Moreland project, project, which is an intervention and research study in the culturally diverse area of Moreland. And that's working with primary schools to explore ways to create healthy settings for children, and in particular to promote physical activity, healthy eating, and positive self-esteem in culturally appropriate ways. But specifically, I'd like to talk about the synergies between health and environmental strategies. And I've got some examples here I'll talk to you about. And the first is food policies. All of the schools that we're working with are re-examining the food policies within the school. So they're doing things like introducing drink water policies where children are encouraged to have their own uh, water bottle and they can have that in class provided it only has water in it. Schools are also introducing, in many cases, nude food days. And I'm sure many of you have heard of the nude food days where families are encouraged to pack school lunch boxes with only food that has no packaging or wrapping. And what that does, of course, is it encourages children to eat healthy, fresh foods, but it also has a huge impact on waste in the school grounds. And one principal has told us that whereas in the past every bin in the school grounds would be full to overflowing by the end of the school day, they now find that on nude food days, the collective amount of waste doesn't even come close to filling one bin, and there's no litter on the school grounds. Cooking gardens, as I've already mentioned, are being introduced in many primary schools in different ways. Different models are being used, but they are all about promoting healthy eating. And of course, they're introducing children to practices such as the importance of water tanks, composting, mulching, seed propagation, and natural ways to protect plants. And this is all in a hands-on um, hands program. Schools are also looking at promoting active transport for their families so that children are being encouraged to walk or ride to school. And that has the added benefit, of course, of reducing vehicle usage and reducing traffic congestion around the schools. And finally, playgrounds are being redesigned to promote active play. And as part of that, schools are having to take into consideration drought resistant designs and particularly drought resistant surfaces. So as you can see, there are clear synergies between health and environmental strategies to the extent that they can actually provide an alternative platform for each other in promoting positive change. Thank you.